Greetings, humans <coughs> and earthlings. Thank you for being here uh, for a very interesting episode of the Roseanne Barb podcast. And um, I'm very excited for uh, guests that can talk about all things all at once, from archaeology to the mysteries to hidden everything, and then back again, including 911. Jimmy Corsetti. Roseanne, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. I've been following you for years, and I couldn't be more excited and proud that you're speaking up, and you've kind of led the charge on exposing the unbelievably, what is it, the, the crazy times we live in where everything's upside down, things don't make sense. So you see, my patience is growing. And um, I have to say real quick, then when you just recently had Tucker Carlson on, and he mentioned that we have absolutely no idea how the Egyptians constructed the pyramids. It's true. And I was basically standing up clapping because I'm like, more people need to say it because this actually is a fact that the Egyptians left us left us with no explanation for how they cut and carved stones that weigh hundreds of tons and then moved them hundreds of miles and then stacked them hundreds of feet above ground level. So anyways, thrilled to be here. But tons did you not hear my answer? Apparently not. You know, something happens with me when I spit out truth, you know, when I speak truth. I don't know if it's because I'm so stunningly gorgeous <laughs> or my sexual pool is so engulfing that males can't even bear to try even to withstand it. It's or, intoxicating. <laughs> yeah, it's intoxicating. Or it's just they think I'm crazy, which, you know, my hat, the nuts, bringing crazy back. Or uh, is it all of the above? Or is it all of the above and that I am speaking truth. But I'm putting a little spin on it on account of I'm already called deplorable and a terrorist enemy of uh, America by the FBI, you know, simply for being a fat, embittered, old Jewish woman who hates Hollywood. It means that you're over the target. What's it mm -hmm. saying that, that the flack is heaviest when you're over the target? They would never come after you if you weren't saying things that are truth, mm -hmm. uh, truthful and resonating with the masses. And so you are a threat because you're doing something right. And in fact, we now know through all the madness of the last few years that anything you say that they go after is exactly what people need to orientate their attention on. Yep. Correct. So you're on the money. You are correct, sir. <laughs> I am the money. That's right. And, uh, you know, because I am it, because I was ordained to be it. And how I know I was ordained to be it, because I was it. And once you are it, you are forever it, because mm -hmm. you were meant to be it, and you will continue to be it no matter what they can say or do about it, right? That's true. That is 100% true. I and agree. I am it, and they ain't it. They wish and I am not going to let these motherfuckers win. There is no way they are going to win. No, and in fact, I hope that you know all the flack that you get you know, just lights a fire under your ass to just oh, keep going it at does. it. Oh, it increases the... The oxygenation in my DNA and my cells, <laughs> my uh, atom, everything on the atomic level of God himself going, Roseanne, I'm like, please leave me alone, Lord. I do. I'm like this. Lord, can't you get somebody else for once? Get some. It doesn't really work out that well for me when I do what you suggest I do. I mean, I, I believe it, but can't you get somebody else? Can't you get a guy, a handsome man, somebody they women want to hear stuff from, but he's like, no, Roseanne, it has to be you. Only you can do it, and we argue and argue. I think it was meant to be. It may have been written in the stars, and we were just talking a few minutes ago about law of attraction. I'm dying to know, because someone like you that's been unbelievably successful, that in your life, do you, how would you describe law of attraction and how it's gotten you to where you're at? Hmm. Good question. Well, law of attraction is the same thing as as above, so below. It's very, very biblical. We're living in a biblical time. It's very biblical, and uh, that's why I say we are living through a religious war, whatever they want to call it. They can right. call it communism, Stalinism, you know, they can call it far right fascism, they can call it Nazi, whatever they want to call it, it's a religious war. It's all the same thing, whatever word they want to use. It is literally, that's what's going on. We live in a time of good versus evil. And, you know, this is, there's actually um, 
religious texts like from the Bible that talk about these times of, of end times. And they mm -hmm. say that woe to those, I think it's like five Isaiah 20. I'm not like a Bible thumper, by the way, but I'm like mm -hmm. anything that was written about thousands of years ago that went to such profound extent to preserve, I think is interesting. And they mention woe to those that will call good evil and evil, evil good, good, bitter mm -hmm. sweet and sweet bitter, and light dark and dark light, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, is that not the upside down world that we're living in now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, certainly Do you is. think it's end days? So I don't want to be Mr. Doomsday guy, but kind of. Yeah. And I'm not necessarily saying in our lifetime, but I do kind of have this weird feeling about that. But I will say for hundreds and hundreds of years, people have been like predicting the apocalypse and that it's going to mm -hmm. end and the sky's going to be on fire and never happen. So mm -hmm. maybe, I mean, the apocalypse, the actual word of it means um, light, like truth coming to light. Right. And so, but yeah, like one of the things I look at like with the mysteries of lost ancient civilizations and cataclysms, mm -hmm. that there's like a, there seems to be a cycle and it might not be precisely oh, yeah. down to the date, but like history repeats itself. And I think that- No, it is a cycle. That's what we've been yeah. talking about pretty much every episode. Mm -hmm. Where the do you, cycle of it. How much time do you think we got? What do you think is happening? Do you think this is in our lifetime and where are the people that are supposed to be fighting this fight? Or how do you think this is? Well, I only can go by Torah. Mm. I can only say if it came out of Torah, I can't make anything up if it didn't come out of Torah, right? which are five books of Moses, you know? Yes. It's the oldest stuff. Yeah. The real OG stuff. Yeah. yeah. The old, old Testament. And uh, <laughs> so... Um, Did they think it's end times? Yeah. This is definitely the end, but hmm. it, it was like, uh, all these things are going to happen, like, uh, because history changed and everything changed and there's a different context now. And uh, if, if you're biblical, it's because, well, the nation returned to its ancestral homeland in 1948. Mm. Then at that point was, uh, was the completion of another 70 year cycle because it, for the Jewish people always goes in 70 year cycles. And this right now is the 70th Jubilee year so that's like 70 times the Jubilee. So yeah, it is right now. Don't they say Israelis are going to get attacked in their homes and in, in the Torah at the end yeah. of days? What does it say? It, it's, all about, it's all about the religious war we're all fighting is an internal war. Mm. It's not out there. It's all inside. And you got to learn how to win it for good. A lot of people are giving in and losing it to bad. And that's what fuels bad and keeps it going, right. are the number of people sacrificed in its name. Mm. But that's what gives it power, are the number of souls sacrificed for it. Because right. those are desecrated humans. I love that this podcast is talking about the end of the world. Yeah. Just smiling. It like, is. Yeah, I guess Look, it is. The polls are shifting. You know what's interesting <laughs> is that you yeah, say 70 years... And the cycle of the uh, equinoxes, the processional cycle, mm -hmm. is measured that it's one degree every 72 years. Mm -hmm. And it's like this grand cycle of 25,920 years. Mm -hmm. And the data shows that like we're halfway through this cycle where things started to warm mm -hmm. approximately 12,800 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've been studying pole shifts. Have you heard of this stuff? No, like, of course. Please tell us. I, I haven't. So the poles shift, uh, the geomagnetic poles that the compass changes over time, they're actively updating runways. Uh, they've been doing it for the last number of years. Back in the late 80s, the magnetic pole was changing um, at like seven miles a year. And then just a number of years ago, it was 30 miles. And now it's like 38 miles a year. It's accelerating. Wow. And I wonder, besides the cataclysmic effects that could potentially have on the environment, which I think it will, I wonder if it's throwing people's brains off. Because like, how do these religious texts, like, foresee these signs that we would see and people in society is breaking down as was described. And so I wonder if like, if salmon and whales are wired to the geomagnetic poles, I wonder if like this is causing people to go crazy. That's a really interesting theory. Yeah. I, I, I saw you talking about the pole shift, but this is something that's always happened, right? It's mm -hmm. nothing new. It's not like the first time they've shifted. No, it's happened hundreds of times that are documented over millions of years and we're overdue for the next big one. But here's what's wild is that 
Media Matters, who's funded by George Soros, mm -hmm. did a hit piece on me. So I was on another podcast. Congratulations, already. by the way. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm like, I'm kind of... Well, I don't, you must have, you must have really it. had some good data. <laughs> you must have told the truth. I was Please. on a podcast that I talked about the geomagnetic poles, and then they ran a hit piece on me. And I'm like, why does Media Matters care like yeah. i mean because I, they re, they know all about taking polls that was good that was good uh, i'm adding a drum effect so like what i i'm like out of all things in the world it's like if they're concerned about trying to debunk a conspiratorial pole shift theory about destructing the ancient times Maybe there's some truth to it. So I've right. gone further down the rabbit hole on this. Uh -huh. what have In you fact, found? Elon Musk had uh, talked about this a while back on a podcast saying that ice ages are a deep, deep rabbit hole. Oh, they are, definitely. You've looked into that? Oh, yeah. She's looked into everything. I've looked into all of it. So to anyone that's listening that hasn't looked into this stuff, this is where things get really wild. So the data shows that we are in the middle of a, I shouldn't say middle, but we are in a ice age right now that's been ongoing for three million years. Mm -hmm. wow. And this is where the part that things get nuts is that from ice core data that we have from the North and South Pole, it shows that over the last 450,000 years, there's been five, well, you could say four, but I would say five interglacial periods. And what that means, interglacial periods are periods of warming. Mm -hmm. Glacials are periods of cooling. Right. So we're coming out of the, you know, the cooling 12,800 years ago, and it's been warming. But this is the part that they were like, trying to debunk me and say that I countered mainstream science. They say, because I said that the, the data shows that the earth is cold more often than it's hot and we should be grateful because when it's warm, we can grow things. When it's freezing, you, right. you, you all die. Right. Right. So this is the part that's crazy when I went down this rabbit hole looking I at I bet they said they get, came up with a vaccine to vaccinate the earth. And that's what we <laughs> so need. It that's what I'm get. talking about. You know, <laughs> <laughs> shout out to my, my buddies at you know Big Pharma. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> ching ching. It's like sell my soul for that. Um, but let me just say this to anyone listening that's curious. Yeah. It's like the periods, this is where it's wild. The periods of cooling are seven to nine times longer than the warming. Hmm. So in other words, the warming period that we're in now is said to last several thousand years, whereas the cooling lasts tens of thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, this is what's actually happening here is that no matter what happens on earth, it's going to freeze again. No matter uh -huh. what we do, no matter how bad us humans trash the planet, that the real thing is that we're going to freeze again. Because I'm like, why else would they come after me? Because right. the last thing they want when they're pushing this man-made, yeah, yeah, their narrative is that, okay, because then I could start asking questions like, oh, well, where are we right now in that processional cycle that said to freeze things over again? What To what percentage is that playing a part in our temperatures? If you're going to come at me and, and, and try to get me to write a check for carbon tax, sorry, Jimmy Corsetti has some questions before he writes that check. And I'll tell you what I'd say right there. I'd thank say you, thank you. their computations are racist. <laughs> well, it's bigoted <laughs> against warm weather. Well, yeah, because the, yeah? The, yeah. I mean, what they have against the tropics. Disgusting. Think about it. This is word That's violence. where the brown people live and they're racist. <laughs> right. So are we right? in danger of warming right now or cooling? I'm confused. Like, so this is the part that's the mystery is that okay. so we were warming. Right. Yeah. The question becomes how much do we warm until it eventually cools again? Here's the part that gets nuts. Decades ago, the so-called experts were saying that, oh, we're going to enter another ice age. Right. And then they backed off that because it didn't happen. And they're like, oh, well, it's global warming. Now they're starting to, to do another flip on that. And <laughs> yeah, now it's climate change. And you want to know something else while I'm at it? Uh, so have you ever heard of the little ice age, mm -mm. the mini ice age? So no. I have heard of that. So from the year 1300 to 1850, there was cooling in the northern hemisphere where mm -hmm. there was um, reduction in crops, livestock, increased famine and disease. There was also subsequently 2,000 years ago, something called the uh, medieval warming period or the Roman warming period, where the northern hemisphere had heated. So much so that there was an abundance of Roman vineyards in the UK, as they've recently discovered. Mm -hmm. So, And it's all tied to sun cycles. So that's another thing, is that where, why don't I hear about this? So if they're going to talk about us trashing this planet and heating it or cooling it, I'm like, well, I just like to know Well, let's cut to the chase. Mm. They want nothing of science anywhere. Right. You mean science TM? I, yeah. I, I've been adding this on all my social media posts. Like, <laughs> trademark. You mean, you mean science TM? Just hit science <laughs> TM. <laughs> little trademark. Because it's bought and paid for. It's like, follow yeah, the money. Absolutely. It's big 100%, bucks. 100%. Yeah. I love that you got a hit piece. That's so cool. I, I want a hit piece. I should be careful how I, I word this. Like, I'm almost relishing it from the standpoint that we were talking about this earlier. It's like there's something the in target. my blood where I enjoy a good fight, a fair oh, yeah, fight. Oh, yeah, me too. It gets me – my brain starts firing mm -hmm. with ideas. Yeah. And 
although I don't want to be on George Soros's naughty list because, like, be careful what you wish for. These people yeah, are they destroy no people. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he already warned me, so I came say, after I'm once. very careful what I say about him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he came already after. warned. It was me. scary. How's it? It was scary. Be a fax machine. Well, to threaten to sue me, yeah. but, you know, that... For what? Because the process... Well, it don't well, matter Well, she said he while. turned to uh, the Nazis. Don't say no. it. But it was true. Well, that It he just was, was a kid. You know the whole story of Soros. He was a kid and was a Nazi yes. slave. Yeah, and he, he So was, you can't hold him responsible right. for what he did there. Right. Which right? is true. He was a slave of the Nazis. He was slave. scared. No, yeah, 14 years old. He was 15. I know the yeah. story. Yeah. yeah. And the part that angered a lot of people is that... He was that, 13. Oh, 13. Yeah. 13. Well, Eight. she had no. said, he t "You can't." St I mean, you have to say that he was a kid. I think that's important. I, and I yeah, he him was a that. slave. Of the like Nazi she slave. said it best after the lawsuit when she got out of it. She was like, "You can't blame him for that. It's everything after that and that he's done what is I hate horrible." Him for. <laughs> yeah. I'll even say, like, "I hey, hate him for what he did after." Yeah, that. right. What's he been more up than the last like, number of decades? And I will say, like, yeah, destroying yeah. currencies, communities, human lives. He's doing it here. He's going to crash the dollar. He's going to buy everything back up. That's what's happening. That's my theory. He You're found totally out the power of, of destruction, and you know that's that's. Uh, and I really resent him calling himself a Jew, which he never does it unless it serves him. He's the only Jewish person that the ADL has ever stuck stuck up for. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> not me. The it only is true. Jew, and he's not even. He doesn't even. He hates Judaism and says destroying Israel is his number one wish, and he hates Judaism. He, hates he doesn't it. consider himself a Jew, but. A 100% Marxist or whatever the hell it he is. He hates everything. But he hates human life. Yeah, he's, he's a very so angry man. I don't like that they say he's a Jew, but he has the Jewish name, a gino, yeah. Jew in name mm, only. And I love that, that is the only Jew that the ADL ever defends. They never defend me for taking apart Valerie Jarrett's Iran deal and saying that it was an existential threat on the people in Israel. And it w that was proven to be true October 7th. Right. And uh, so they can kiss my ass, too. You know, I'm not going to let them win. No. I don't like Stalinists, Marxists, or fascists. I don't like true believers that think they're the only ones who have the right to speak. That's de it, all those isms and ists are it's devilry. It's it about is tyrannical devilry. control and domination of mankind. Right. And I'm on the side of mankind. Like Me good too. good versus evil. Either you're you're gonna be a stand up person and do what's right and say the truth, or you're on the other side. And there's a line in the sand as far as I'm concerned now. That's right. There's one 100%. law for all people, including the Jewish people. And I'm so sick of the world's double standards toward Jewish people and trying to use us for their moral hostages as we continue to be targets of all their immoral uh mm -hmm bullshit it's going to change and everybody's bullshit is going to go away and people are no longer going to be able to say one thing and do another in the this new configuration of night of 2024 bullshit is going to die quick right i'm optimistic um i think times are going to get worse before they get better but mm -hmm. like they're talking about Mark of the Beast stuff, where in, in the Bible it says no one will be able to purchase in the markets unless they take the Mark of the Beast. I'm mm -hmm. like, I think the Mark of the Beast is the digital central currency. digital banking 100%. currency. Of course 100%. it is. You can pay on Amazon with your palm now. Right. And like you were saying, Jake, about you know the collapse of the dollar. That's so, the proof that your body yeah. is currency, yeah. which right. they've wanted all along since they put in the Federal Reserve. Right. The yeah. human body is currency. That's yeah. what a birth certificate's about. Federal. Yeah, it's like yeah. not yeah. even federal. It's a private institution of the Rockefellers and the yeah. the Rothschilds. And the, this stuff goes back hundreds of years. It's not a conspiracy. It's just true. Somebody it is true. started the banking system, which is brilliant in its own way. You get, you know, but um, yeah, when it comes to the dollar, the fact that they are now removing the petrodollar, which yeah. is what's made the United States dollar so powerful, that's right. going away in 2024. Yeah. The SWIFT uh, system with the U.S. dollar is traded in from OPEC, gone. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, the fact that um, uh, the BRICS, that you know, Brazil, Russia, India, and China, and then a couple dozen other countries around the world are establishing their own currency. Yeah. That's right. Like I'm like, this is there's a lot of it's stories coordinated. in the world, but this is one of the biggest stories. One of the biggest, biggest it's stories. Over. We hear nothing about it no. in the American press. Because they don't want us to talk about it. They don't it. want us to know about well, it. Well, that's what I was saying to Jimmy that Soros, what he does, that's how he got his money, is he goes in, he manipulates markets, he basically essentially collapses their economy. And then when their economy collapses, he buys shit up for cheap. 
Mm -hmm. That's what he does. So it's yeah. like, why is Soros involved in American politics? Well, no shit. He's destroying America. Because he's a vulture investor. Well, you don't want to buy a house for a million dollars if you can buy it for 250000 If you want to get it down to yeah, 250000 you got to destroy everything that people that's who what, live there. You that's know, how like, you get say, it done. in some Hawaiian island, so you destroy all their lives and yeah. memory. Burn them with the satellite. You know, yeah. And get rid of the family indigenous. Well, that's and, how you uh, get the money down. You get, you get to get investors to come and build, you know, Disney World. That's what it is. And it's it's buy low, sell high. That's yeah. that's what it is. It's like, how many billions of dollars does that guy need? I'm like, shouldn't he be like riding jet skis and living in an all-inclusive, you know, and just enjoying himself? Like, No, they never enjoy themselves. No. And he, Except for them a couple times a year is when they go to them festivals they do. <laughs> yeah, oh, in the Sun Bohemian Valley Grove? And, and no, them festivals in the castles. Oh, what, Those, what's this? Deep, dark, Ooh, a new deep, new thing for you castles. to look into, Jimmy. What's is this the Epstein stuff? Oh, it's Epstein's just part of the. Castle. Oh, I there's no evidence. This. There's no evidence. Epstein, no, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, you got to keep saying, just like in 2020, there is no evidence. There is no evidence. Roseanne, there's no evidence that George Soros doesn't love you. Do you trust anything that's uh, being parroted out of the mouth of so-called experts on the TV? No, when I hear trust the experts, I know they're lying. After the last three years, I, I just don't trust anybody. Me either. Uh, that's why I'm, kind, I'm very excited to introduce you guys to the Wellness Company and specifically their medical emergency kit. It has eight potentially life-saving medications so you can feel safer. It comes with meds like um what amoxicillin is one Amoxicillin, you read those jake ivermectin oh yeah that's the big one z pack that's the horse paste z pack mm -hmm. uh and it also has a 22 page guidebook which is basically like having a doctor on call yeah you don't have you don't have to go on web md yeah. and see that you have cancer they i gotta get out. one of those for everybody for christmas yeah that would be a great and a satellite phone. Good christmas present that that's would what i'm doing so write me down and get me that message. i will and liberal our liberal uh your liberal children oh liberal, hell i'll even give them one. they would love they love ivermectin they're huge I mean, fans now they're of huge fans after joe rogan came out with it no that's that was when it was horse paste but yeah anyway so yeah twc.health forward slash rb use promo code rb for 10 percent off <laughs> there's no evidence I want to see there's no evidence just say it 10 times fast and then you, you could just put somebody under some trans like, you're right there is no evidence just there's like, no evidence that he is dangerous to our democracy <laughs> remember that one where they go that could be dangerous and they're all trying to win an Emmy all those newscasters <laughs> have you seen that clip with all the newscasters yeah. yeah so that's how they got the job because they could go there's a weather front coming in <laughs> you know they all, they all have brought like, to you by Pfizer <laughs> yeah exactly 100% <laughs> they're spokes models cheers by the way yeah <laughs> cheers I'm so glad you're here so can, can we get a little bit of your background because I know yeah. we just went into this stuff and we'll get back to it but just for people that don't know you if they don't so who, my name is Jimmy Corsetti yeah. I have a channel a YouTube channel called Bright Insight I'm also on Rumble now and I basically Bright most, Inside Bright Insight Bright Insight and, Bright Insight yeah Sight Someone actually copied me right inside. Does not plug that person. Um, but uh, That's yeah, probably right a porn site. Yeah, <laughs> <inside>. <laughs> yeah they, they talk about the mysteries of the pyramids with their shirts off. It's awesome. Just kidding. <laughs> There's um, something there, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the uh, lost my train of thought. All right. So I talk about mostly the mysteries of lost ancient civilizations and various Such conspiracies. As? So, for example, there is literally no evidence for how the Egyptians built the pyramids. Yeah. There is incredible feats that they did that that is completely inexplicable for what we were taught about in school involving the Egyptians. For example, let me give a quick one. Uh, there is a statue called the Ramesseum. It was carved from one piece of stone, mm -hmm. 1,000 tons. It was moved approximately 150 miles from the known quarry in Egypt. This thing, to put in comparison, that just in 2012, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art moved a 340-ton stone, 106 miles. To do so, they had to build, construct, a tra trailer truck around it that was, two, get this, 260 feet long, 32 feet wide, wow. had 44 axles, 196 tires. It cost $10 million and took a year of planning to execute. The thing moved in. And so meanwhile, there's these statues that are twice and even three times as heavy. And they were said to be, the Egyptians were said to be a Bronze Age culture, which means their most sophisticated level of tooling was copper based, which is crap. Like you'll never, they, 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 claim the 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 experts tm the archaeologist tm and the historians tm claim that this surely was how they constructed and the, these these stones and um when these methods and these theorized ideas how they could have done it when they've been tested in modern times 
it's complete crap. It takes forever. It's not feasible. It's not accurate. It's not with the level of precision. And so to anyone listening, like if you actually go down the rabbit hole of lost ancient civilizations, it's abundantly clear that there was something that happened here on earth that was, they were more advanced than what we were taught about in school and potentially very advanced, maybe even more advanced than we are today, but that's conspiracy. That's conjecture. I've always thought that. I've it, always thought that. It's, it's, you know, they talk about, you know, what the religious texts from around the world, that there was a flood. And when you look at 12,800 years ago, there was something called the Younger Dryas Climate Catastrophe, where there was a rapid end to last ice age, and the Earth's sea levels re- rose approximately 420 feet in a Jeez. relatively short period of time. And since most of the, or today, half the population around the world lives on or near a coast, mm-hmm. it's believed that in ancient times it was even more so because of the resources mm-hmm. and a, a, a ability to travel. And um, so I think that there's evidence that those those flood legends are based on truth because they extend five continents around the world, hundreds of different cultures talk about a flood that reset them. Even the Egyptians say this, which is so wild. Mm -hmm. Um, Speaking of which, I want to tell you, because I heard you on one of your podcasts where you mentioned that you did a DNA test and you had Egyptian in there, North Africa, Mm -hmm. right? Me too. It came up as Coptic Egyptian, which is the ancient Egyptian. And I also learned that my mother was one point or is 1.2% Ashkenazi Jew. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm I'm an African Jew. Yeah. Yeah, most of us Am are. I not? I'm not well, well, most of us came from most Jews came from Egypt. Right. I mean, that's what the biblical story is about. It makes you wonder who you're related to. What if you're related to like Cleopatra or? Oh, I know Nefertiti? I was related. Oh, she to thinks her. she is Cleopatra. To well, be honest, yeah, I do. It's Timmy Court. You don't have to lie. I, I do think I. She was said her. in every. I go. You know, I've I, said it my whole life. I said, you notice everyone in their past life is someone famous. We're like, who are you? And she's like, I go. They always think they're Cleopatra. Yeah. Mom's like, no, that's different. I was Cleopatra in every single one of my past lives. Nice. I was. <laughs> every I was. time. <laughs> and all these other waitresses think they was, but they wasn't. <laughs> well, Jimmy, when I when I found you, it was mm. through the, the Rogan episode, and I've been telling mom about it because I want to get into Antarctica and all this stuff. But yeah. real quick, you made a really profound argument about Atlantis. That I don't know if that's been updated, but... You, well, isn't you, that in the polar, the whole polar thing? He thinks it. Yeah. You think it's in yeah, Africa? Yeah, it is. Right? Listen to this. I don't have my phone on me. Have you, I got to show you a picture? Do you mind talking about it real quick? Because I no, think she'll find this fast. And then so we got to get into Antarctica, because that's her. Specialty. I want to show you a picture of what's called the Rishat structure, yes. or more commonly known as the Eye of the Sahara. Oh yes, I know it. Okay, uh-huh. and, I know and, it. So most people have never seen or heard of this before. I never did until you mentioned it. And what's wild is that. So it's a circular structure in, in northwest Africa in the modern country of Mauritania. It's 250 miles off the coast of the Atlantic. And it's made up of concentric circles. And what's so wild is that it matches more than a dozen similarities to what Plato had described as the lost ancient capital city of Atlantis. And to anyone listening that thinks that you know Atlantis is a Disney movie, on the contrary, that the Egyptians, the legend comes from the Egyptians that on their walls they wrote about how they were descendants of uh, an island that was destroyed in a cataclysm and that the Egyptians were colonists who had started over new. Mm-hmm. And what's wild about this place is that not only does it match concentric circles, specifically three of water and two that would be of land, it had an opening at the south. Mm-hmm. It was made up of red, black, and white color stones. Right. It had mountains to the north that of all names was called Atlas, who was said to be the first king of Atlantis. So the mm-hmm. Atlas Mountains are in modern day uh, Morocco. Additionally, and this is wild, so Atlantis was said to have an abundance of gold, and so much so that their outer walls were lined in it. Well, it turns out that the richest man in all of human history was named Mansa Musa of the Mali Empire, which is consists of modern-day Mauritania, um, and so rich that he'd be he'd be more wealthy than Elon Musk and Bezos combined. Wow. Um, and and what's interesting is that prior to the discovery of gold in North America, apparently. Uh, Europe got most of their gold from Mauritania, mm. and and so it's like the, the, there's tons of other there's a n- whole number of other fascinating details about it, but um, it's something that most people haven't heard of before, and it's a site that gets shunned, and I think I know why, which is that there's if you look at North Africa, the Sahara, northwest region of the Sahara, from satellite imagery like Google Earth, it's obvious that it was blasted by the ocean and some mm-hmm. catastrophic force. You could see textbook water striations mm-hmm. that like they teach about in in geology class. Mm-hmm. Like, I, and so it appears that there was some sort of cataclysm that wiped that region in, off. In, in northern Africa, Mo. Here's another little fact that it turns out, because a lot of people will say, well, what are you talking about? The Sahara Desert? Like, yeah. this would be there? 
people with wild is that up until 5,000 years ago, the Sahara was a lush, green, tropical paradise with one of the largest networks of rivers ever known to exist. Mm -hmm. It had the largest freshwater lake ever known to exist. Right. Did you know that, Ma? I yeah, didn't I know did. that. Isn't that fascinating? It's wild. And I'm like, mm -hmm. see, this is the thing. In the context of man-made climate change, uh, before I sent off my carbon tax check, I'd just like to clarify what exactly it is that happened to the Sahara, yeah. because apparently it, they now think that it changed in a very, very short period of time. I'm like, so what's that about? What happened there? It was our cars, probably. Yeah, it yeah. was ancient cow farts. <laughs> they had too many cows. <laughs> but what was interesting- There's something it, that oh. goes on that we don't know anything about, I mean, but it is a cycle. Yeah. I mean, I guess we'll figure it out sooner or later, right? When the sky's on fire. I mean, I don't know. Why don't we ask <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, who's building a $100 million bunker on his one of his uh, Hawaiian estates. This just came out like two days ago. Do you hear about this? No. No, but he lives right down the road from me. Let's get a ticket to that thing. Have bunker. you met him? No. No, I never met him. You should go... I don't know if he's a human. I think he's one of those he's people just on media. There's he's something. I swear. He's what? just a media presence. He? I don't think there really is a person. He looks like an empty vessel. I'm not... Look, look. hey, Mark, if I met you in person, maybe, you know, I might... I could get a read he's on you. He's got the realtor eyes, as I call well, it. He's, <laughs> he's autistic, so I always worry oh, about... Oh, is he? It. He is. Okay, I didn't know that. Well, I mean, I think he is. I'm well, because he's got the realtor eyes. All so the realtors that, are autistic, I guess. <laughs> I you, think somehow it works. What's the bunker? It's so I don't know all the details about it other than that it's one hundred million dollars. It's gonna have a water tank that's like fifty five feet long and eighteen feet tall, if I remember right, which I have to do the math, but that's like huge. That's oh, that's a few swimming pools. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. and and stockpile of all kinds of stuff. It's also gonna have blast doors. Well, what's he worried I need about? that. So yeah. here's the here's the, right yeah this, this what is you set he up. Know? So here's the, here's the good news. I got good news. Well, the bad news is that I think they know something's coming. Mm. The good news yeah. is that if it's being built right now, I'm like, oh good. I thought we were all going to die in like you know before, you know maybe we have a little bit more time. <laughs> Just know that he's got to get this thing done. That's true. So well, like, okay. That's true. I got time to make a little bit more money. Here's what <laughs> I have to say to all of them. Here's my message. I don't know if these guys have ever, but I want to say, have you guys ever heard of this guy? Uh, by then, his name is God. Uh, Have you guys ever heard of him at all? Because he is kind of the one that's in charge of everything, and it'll be what he wants and not what they want. And that's gonna, can you imagine what a shock that's going to be to them when they realize it's going to go the way God says it's going to go and not them and their study groups and their PR people? <laughs> No it's amount of not money gonna go that way. No amount of money in the world is going to be able to save them from what eventually comes their way. And I think that people need to mm -hmm. really get in touch with their spirituality to realize that we're obviously a product of creation. Like uh -huh. I look at this, like how did this all come from nothing? The like the, the mainstream scientists will say, you know, the Big Bang, this and the, this primordial soup theory, where all this crap matter came together, and over time, <laughs> enough a little bit of warmth, you know, some algae formed, and it turned into this other stuff. And I'm like, but here I am. So this is amazing. Did you know that we're made up of stardust? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the, almost a huge percentage. Carbon. Of and that's why they're trying mm -hmm. to tax carbons because everything's <laughs> made of carbon. They're, you're the that's carbon what, they don't want. <laughs> they're the carbon <laughs> they want to get rid of. No, I think that, that, that's what Nazis they are. That's like, we're, gonna, <laughs> we're going to tax every molecule of water in the <laughs> right. ocean. Well, the biggest companies on earth bought up water rights all over um, the United States and it's elsewhere. Terrifying. I'm like, and I heard that. I'm like, oh, God. It's over. Yeah. Oh, real quick. Don't drink tap water, uh, that fluoride they put in there. Do you drink spring water? Do you have water delivered to where mm -hmm. you live? Yeah, but who knows where it comes from, <laughs> you know? I Bill don't Gates. believe anything. It right. probably comes out of the tap. It probably does. Yeah. It probably does. <laughs> they put a mountain <laughs> on the logo. Yeah. It probably comes out of the toilet, straight out of the toilet. <laughs> they Just strap them on my like <laughs> gallon, like the, the <laughs> joke's on me. <laughs> <laughs> probably sifted through Clorox to get the shit, probably. <laughs> shit DNA out and then put in a plastic bottle. Yeah, they're probably throwing the I vaccine mean, we're in there, doomed. too. The thing is, we're not going to be here for much longer. Which I'm not. I mean, I'm 71. I'll die my way out of this shit. Oh, no, you so, got you got 29 years left. Easy. You're going she's a, I tell people she's a cockroach. She's going to live all of us. Nah, I'm saying if I'm lucky, I'll leave. But I feel sorry for the ones that are going to stay because when this bullshit hits the wall and it <laughs> becomes apparent to all these people mm -hmm. that are these clerks that voted for Joe Biden... And stole and vote for him nine or ten times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when all they find out yep. when they find out that their retirement and benefit funds already went over there to the Ukraine, they're gonna be pissed. 
even then they still won't believe it because the media us. will spin it with something else and they'll blame White you and I. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it'll still be our fault. Damn, Roseanne Barr and Jimmy Corte, it's all that podcast. You know, it's like <laughs> he hadn't tarnished George <laughs> Soros' reputation. <laughs> she said Jew. They said that I, not a Jew, but that's what they mean, but that I was a, what was I controlled opposition to Illuminati because I had a black and white uh, checkerboard mask. Uh, I doubt Jimmy saw that. What do you that. call it's it? So, to you wipe a, your feet? Uh, I saw a, this. A I did see this, yeah. actually. To, to it's hilarious. And people are like, you know, you know, throwing McKenzie all this Illuminati Childs. stuff. Childs. Oh, real quick. While I have you, I have to bring up. I, I, I the golf do clap to when you were on. I don't want to talk bad about him. I haven't met. But Bill Maher. And you looked him right in the eye and said, you're MK Ultra," And he looked like he just froze. And, and then he tried to pretend he didn't know what you were talking about. Oh, I on. told him, I reminded him of when me and him got in a fist fight at the Playboy Mansion. Did you? Did you guys? Yeah. You and he did not even remember it. Really? I said, that's because you're all MK Ultra, Bill. Wait, so you guys, you hit him and did he hit you back? Of course he did, bitch. I said, you hit me back. Oh, that, now he, that's why he forgot. He got to, yeah, he got he to, went I, MK this did Ultra. not happen. <laughs> <laughs> he went, beep, beep, beep. We shall remove that bit of information. <laughs> what was that? The part that throws me off about him is that he's clearly really intelligent. I hit him first. I'll, yeah. I'll admit it. He probably had it coming? He did. He oh, did. Yeah. yeah. There you go. He probably did. I don't condone violence, but you know. We but. went for each other's nuts, but I didn't have any nuts because I'm a woman. But he looks at women like somebody who has psychic nuts. Mm. You don't look at a woman as like what it is. He's got a perverse view of women. Well, that's, that's, it, it's women that he's not attracted to. He looks like that. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's if he doesn't want to fuck you. Yeah, because I would. I ran into Bill Maher back in the day so many times in in town, and he always had like the most beautiful supermodel on his show. Really, it was a, it was a escort. Uh, it oh, was. you don't know that. Don't get him going. Uh, uh, allegedly. Well, it's whatever. No. She was really into Bill for that night. Gotcha. Well, that's what he wanted. No. That's why he's no, always at the Playboy Mansion. No, if I were single and rich, I'd do the same thing. They were all at the Playboy Mansion. But I'm just saying he doesn't have a problem with women. They were all trying to have sex saying. with all the super bottles they could mm. have well, sex with. Well, of course. With. That's why he was Who's there. Who's going to fault him? That's what men do. No shit. Hey, live and let live. You I'm know? just yeah. saying he he doesn't have a problem with women that... He's attracted to his work. Let's focus on what he really did He got did mad at me because I didn't follow the Democrat Party line at the time. Yeah. He, listen. He's still mad at me for it. I didn't like Hillary Clinton. He's How could he pop up? He they likes her? All, uh, of course. Nobody likes Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Nobody likes her. And she doesn't even like work for her and have like a financial, like, you know, investment stake in it. Because I'm like, the fact that you were on with him and, and talked about the election, that now, he is they so. they still love Hillary. People are saying they're going to put her up. With Newsom, that's one Trump. of the theories floating. Around. That's what people are saying. Yeah, I'm afraid they're going to try to throw Michelle in there. Well, that's what they're saying too. And the Rock, Michelle, <laughs> Michelle, and uh, Hillary. Yeah. They they're have saying to that run. Could be one of the ways they go. They have to run Biden. I want to. I want to squelch all those theories because yeah. never. They cannot ditch Biden. Like it doesn't matter because they the way they went to bat for him, the way they covered up the cheating, the whole thing they've done. If they sit there and go, okay, the guy we picked is dementia and he's he's a mongo. Let's move on. They lose all their leverage. They cannot. They have to ride Biden all the way to the end. So I promise you, Biden is going to run for re-election. There's not going to be a switch. I'll put my life on it. Okay. I've heard this theory so many times. If they sit okay, there and go, well, okay, we're going to go with news. I'm, I'm usually right. If, if they go, we're going to dip ditch Biden because he's crazy. So uh, pick Newsom, for instance. Then we go, wait a minute. You pushed Biden. The guy clearly is has dementia. So why should we trust you again with who your next pick is? You can't well, do it. Well, especially if he gets impeached, which... Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene yeah. said there's no Republicans. We asked her yesterday, Jimmy. She's, traitors. She said it won't happen. Interesting. She traitors. said there's a lot she of Republicans that all, won't. You know, traitors. Democrats. Hundred percent. All these these all these the GOP Republicans people. are Democrats. Yes, they are. They are trans Dems. Mm -hmm. They're closeted Marxists. They're so it's smart. So obvious. They Anyone infiltrated at us at this point. They won't acknowledge what happened in 2020 involving the elections. We don't have to get into this. No, let's get yeah. into it. Let's get into it. Fuck yeah! It's abundantly clear to anyone that's actually researched this topic, as opposed to sat in front of CNN and MSNBC like a zombie with the kept saying over and over again, "There is no evidence. There is no evidence." <laughs> mm -hmm. Like my joke earlier, and they believe it. I'm like, actually, that's not true. If you look into this, there's a lot of and evidence. Here we are. We're sitting in Maricopa County right now. Trump won it 
cleanly here in 2016, and there was no reason to think that he wasn't going to win in 2020. It was abundantly clear. I have liberal friends that said, yeah, I know he's going to win. And they're all saying, yeah, okay, I thought he was going to like create a war, but like he didn't. And they're just kind of like, you know, being quiet about it. I knew an older gentleman who told me, he's like, I voted Democrat my entire life, but not this year. And you know why? That's how quickly we forget that back in 2020 in the summer, Antifa was burning down cities <laughs> and everyone was, remember, defund the police. Defund the summer the police. of love. I didn't know one, I don't know one single person that actually was like, yeah, defund the police. Those are crazy people. Like no, no sane person is actually like, yeah, get rid of the police. I don't, I don't care about 911. I don't want to call them. Like that's insane. Right. And I think a lot of logical people heard this stuff and were like, okay, fine. Just let Trump take it again. Like, and they didn't care. And I don't even think they voted, um, a lot of them. And so to, to say that Joe Biden got 81 million votes mm -hmm. when Barack Hussein Obama got 69 and a half million votes, which was a record turnout, people were standing on the street to vote for him. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I remember this. It was unprecedented. Yeah. And then, and then you know, for Trump to have got, what was it? 74. Right? So I'm like, I just, I don't know. I know this is super taboo, but like, it feels good to speak the truth. And the reality is that we live in a constitutional republic. And if we That's don't have right. fair elections, the, con the, the republic is already lost. That's and right. people will say to me, like, Jimmy, you're a, a, a you know, history YouTuber. Why are you talking about politics? I'm like, it's not politics. Th th thank you. It's, it's not. not it's, politics. it's history it's, repeating. Right. We keep talking about patterns. I want to throw freedom over slavery. Mm -hmm. Well, and they've got us so bullshitted with it, you know. Have you ever looked into the patterns when you're talking about the polls shifting or whatever? There seems to be a pattern also with anti-Semitism. Mm. Have you ever, years. have you found that yet? Because I want to. I don't know what to think, make of what it. What is I that? I have no idea. I don't it, know. I don't know why. It's I, a I, thing. Yeah. I, it's it's something. I don't, like, what does it mean? So, like, God's chosen people. Where does that come from? The, what what does, how far does this go back? Like, I don't even understand. I'm going to tell you how it goes. Mm. <laughs> this is how it goes. Give God. Me. He's looking for somebody to represent his laws. Well, he goes to the French. Would you like to represent my laws? And they go, well, like what? He goes that, uh, well, uh, that, you know, you shouldn't covet what your neighbor has. Ah, no, thanks. We're not down for that. Then he goes to the uh, Germans and says, would you like to represent my laws? And they go, like what? And he goes, well, thou shalt not kill is one. They go, no, nah, we're not. That's, we're not down for that. And uh, then <laughs> he goes to the Italians. This is an old joke. Don't then say he, it's a joke. It was so then good. Then <laughs> he goes to the Italians. He goes, would you like to represent my laws? And they go, like what? And he goes, thou shalt, uh, whatever it is. What was that one? I, cannot, covet, I commit adultery. Covet the neighbor's wife. Yeah, it's adultery. But then they go, oh, no, that's not for us. <laughs> so then he goes to the Jews. He goes, would you like to represent my laws? And the Jews go, how much? And he goes, it's free. We'll take 10. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. It's a great to keep that one. I that's love that how one. it goes. But there is, there is, a, there is a turning a fourth turn or whatever. There's a pattern. We keep we talk about this every episode. We're trying to figure it out. There's something happening now that's happened before. Mm. Um, that's historically documented. I mean, I always cite Salem or McCarthyism. Mm. That's what it feels like to me. But there is a point where people just go batshit fucking crazy. And I'm, I wanted yeah. to ask you. That's why one of the things I want to ask you when you're talking about the poll shifting or whatever. Yeah. Do you think the madness is? A, a, is part of that? I can't prove it. This is literally mm -hmm. yeah, it's just this a theory. Is, this is it. Kind of it would make sense actually it if, would. The, if the geomagnetic poles, which mm -hmm. influence life on Earth, including birds, insects, mm -hmm. the biggest mammals on Earth, whales, mm -hmm. uh, salmon, if their lives are dependent on the geomagnetic poles for orientation, this is how like yeah, for orientation, go, yeah. Right. yeah, they this would how they be travel intent. tens of thousands of miles and then return to virtually the same spot that they did. Same thing yeah. with salmon. Within meters yeah. of where they were born, they would turn in, uh, to to lay, uh, throw their eggs down. Because um, they were programmed for regeneration and to mm -hmm. re replicate. Well, they're, they're sensing something. Right. That's not Something explainable. That we, you're right. Like some sort of sixth sense that we just can't wrap. Future science will, uh, you know, identify it. But there, since there's scientific evidence that like the poles do influence life on earth, this earth, what's to say that it doesn't influence us? Because people are going crazy. Like, I don't even get it. I'm like, this is like, I'm looking around. I'm like, it's I, crazy. I, I talk to like, do you see what's going on here? Like, this is deteriorating. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's really crazy. I know skeptics will be like, well, maybe it's the internet. 
no, the internet's been around for a little bit and it didn't start off too crazy. Like, I don't know. I just feel like in my gut, for whatever it's worth, might not be worth anything, but I'm like, I just sense that something's coming and that I'm living at this point in time for a reason. At least I want to believe that way. You know, it's like that saying, like, live your life like it's a movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, we're living in history, so I'm embracing it. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is whatever's the future of humanity is right now being determined. The future is not certain. I think things will get a lot worse before they get better because that's typically how things go um, historically. Like, for example, for the masses to actually stand up and do something about the tyrant that the corruption that's going on. And tyranny you know, is the right word. Mm-hmm. You were going to say it. Yep. Usually, historically, there is no revolt until people go something like oh, nine yeah. meals or without nine meals, which yeah. is like three days of food. So, like, usually it's not because right now, like, things. How do I put this? I was born in 1984, and I never would have imagined things would be the way they are now with the corruption. Could you imagine if all the World War II veterans were alive today in their prime to see this? Would never have happened. Mm-mm. Never. And 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 so it's like. I just think that it won't be now that we have our internet, I can order food to be delivered to me. I could just sit on, I could play a video game. I could distract myself with videos. I can just do anything else to avoid the confrontation that will inve- inevitably come. And, and so it's not going to be until people get desperate, they see their kids starving, um, that they'll do something. But don't worry. That's where the World Economic Forum and the digital currency is going to come yeah. in to save the day. Yeah. And that's how they're going to do it. This is my, let me give my big prediction. Let's hear it. They will, the United States, the collapse of the United States dollar is imminent. I made a video about this in July of 22, where I said it was probably going to come more later that year. I was wrong. I don't have a crystal ball. But when I look at BRICS, when I look at the removal of the petrodollar, it is now certainty. It is a mathematical certainty that the U.S. dollar is losing its power and it's going to accelerate through the next year mm-hmm. as these measures go into place. And so with that being said, once we're all impoverished and infl- inflation goes through the roof for real through the roof to where you can't afford a meal, the powers that be will come in and save the day with like, don't worry, we got you. It's a digital currency, all is well. Yeah. Here's your mark of the beast, and then they own you. Once that digital currency is in place, it is over. The social credit system will be there. It's already being exercised in China. And and so I am very fearful of of what's to come. Yeah, uh, you're you're dead on. You're uh, over the target. Are well, you that's get a hippie, why I am a conspiracy have, theorist, so. <laughs> we have to have our own currency, definitely, the people. Yeah. Well, gold, the ammunition, have to have our own currency. food. I think we're going to well, have to. Well, they said it was going to happen in Texas first, the first gold back currency for the United States. Texas is, uh, I mean, I, I follow Texas and a lot. It's going to have reason. to happen that we have our own American currency. Right. That but reminds have, me, go to rvlikesgold.com. You know what I think? What? That, they're going to make that illegal. Because that you just oh, yeah, pres- they present. They probably will. They will, mm-hmm. because think about it. With these 87 additional thousand IRS agents, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, are they going to check Venmo payments or are they. Are they yeah, they're going to do Venmo. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they are, but like, no. I mean, like, what? Are they doing that to just do more audits? Because no. they're giving them guns, right. literal yeah. M4s. Yeah, they'll just shoot us. All right. And yeah, so they're like, going to kick your door down. Yeah, they kick your door down. You. Like, I heard you paid for something gold. Watch, they're going to make gold illegal. They'll make Bitcoin illegal. The oh, only that, thing you'll I be able- knew they were going to do that to Bitcoin, but. I didn't think they were going to do it to gold. Well, I don't I, know that they will. This is just my. But yeah. that'd be this is smart. what I think, maybe. Yeah, that'd well, be smart of them. If you have to do. say allegedly and look at the allegedly. camera. That's what we do. Yeah, which one? This that's one, your right? camera. Allegedly. That's what we do. Allegedly, here. TM. Yeah. <laughs> now you're conspiracy covered. DM. <laughs> I don't know. What I'm hey, listen. What like bigger conspiracy before? theory is there, is there than the Big Bang theory, though? Right. Yeah, it's the scientific accepted thing. It's the most bullshit conspiracy theory I've ever heard. It is. It's it crazier than anything we do, right? Because how do you have some? something from nothing. You don't. You it don't. makes no sense. And I think that it just goes beyond the human brain's ability to comprehend. And yeah, the same it just turns off at the point where it skips the logic. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go off. Right. Because you can't try to understand insanity. It, it's mm. not, that's what we're not, we're not here to live in an insane web of lies. And right. Try to figure it out. Speaking, we're supposed to just be here living life and loving it. Yeah, we're supposed to literally, we're kids, we're yeah. children. Like, think about it. Playing is fun, and, and life shouldn't be quite this awful. I, I won't say it awful. Be. It could be so much better for everybody. There could be a golden age. I believe it happened in the past, and I believe there will be one in the future. I do too. I think it's very close. Yeah. As soon as all the women get sick of the bullshit, yeah. it'll change in a heartbeat. What's it going to take for the women to get sick? Like, over the limit sick? Of the bullshit? Yeah. 
I think it's happening now because of them coming for the kids and the kids Not are the single young, mothers. Yeah. Young women, though, the Swifties, they don't give a shit. They're oh, them. Yeah, well, they can't ever get pregnant because they're vaccinated. <laughs> so they're, it's a whole different So they'll die them. off in one general. We just have to so, put yeah, up with Taylor Swifties for one. Don't even need to worry about right? them. They're but the, the young voter is my biggest concern. That is my, that is my fear. When I go to bed at night, that's what I, I think before I close my eyes is the 18 to 24-year-old is so stupid indoctrinated but yeah, they don't even know they don't get it they don't same way i'm no, an iraq war know. veteran i used to get in debates out of high school um with you know when they were doing the iraq war invasion i used to yell back and forth with friends would debate this stuff and like justify the invasion and george w bush's policies and everything and now i've done such a 180 but i know what it's like to have believe in something like there's no way this is a lie mm. of course there's wmd just they haven't found them yet you don't understand <laughs> of course you would have hit them what's wrong with you <laughs> do you, you know still, jimmy you went to work. iraq mom Huh? He served in Iraq after 9-11? I volunteered. I believe George Bush's lies. Um, I was inspired by... All right, so my father was a Vietnam veteran, although he was basically drafted. Um, both my grandparents, uh, World War II veterans. I saw too many movies as a kid, and I'm like, I'm going to go... I want to... Yeah, I'm going to get a medal. I'm going to... You know, I'm going to... And I saw... Save America. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I saw the movie. I'm like... And, and then I was a, a high schooler on 9-11, so I was yeah. profoundly affected because I'm like yeah. a, a young man, a kid... But like, seventeen years old is an impressionable age, yeah, and so it is. that's who goes to war. Yeah, it's all kids. It's all. So when I finally got to Iraq, I was twenty-five, and I was, I was on the higher end of age. I mean, there's plenty of people older than me, but a vast majority were like twenty. There were so many people there that were barely twenty-one. Um, kids. Um, but anyway, so that was part of my awakening. Is once I learned that that once I finally came to grips, like, oh my god, this wasn't like. Like they didn't screw that up. It wasn't like, oh well, bad intel and darn. No, no it was, was like, oh, this was there was lies told based on almost zero evidence, and in some cases zero evidence. And so it's like once I realized, I'm like, oh my god, one, you know, seeing the the entire media as well as the government all in on that lie, it really mm -hmm. wakened me up. I'm like, things are not as they seem. And then I go down the rabbit hole from there and various conspiracies. I learn about o Operation, um, um, what's the paperclip. Mockingbird. Operation yeah, Mockingbird is the one I was looking at. Mm -hmm. Mockingbird, Paperclip, as well as um, what's the one where they were going to Monarch. Blow... Which one's that? Operation Monarch. Where they're going to blow something up. The, the one, um, Woods, something Woods. Um, it's where oh, Northwoods. North North Woods. Thank Operation you. North Woods, yeah. Anyone that's listening hasn't heard of this. They, the, Google the CIA, it. They were, yeah, Google this. That's like, the, the actual government documents that they were going to blow up uh, airliners and believe it on Cuba so we could go in and do an invasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is true. I'm like, hearing that, I was like, <gasps> you know, <laughs> oh, God bless kid. Alex Jones for blowing the lid on that. You got, have you talked to Alex Jones? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're yeah, friends we with him. We love him. We're going to, we're going to, we can't wait to have him on. He's yeah. coming on when He's we get back to Texas. back, you know, where he belongs. We put a lot of energy into that, too. Because mm. we just love him, Uncle Alex. He's he's the uncle at all the all the uh, family dinners that's yep. telling the truth. You know, everybody yeah. calls him crazy, but he's always right. Ahead of his time. And, yeah, I want to meet him. Like, I adore him. I'm like, with the sacrifices that he has made, I'm like, you know, telling mm -hmm. the truth isn't easy. I've told the truth, you know, and, and you see the way friends and family and everyone, like, you say things that people don't like, even if it is true. And, and you know, the truth hurts, as the saying goes. Well, people hate truth tellers. I had that in my act. Remember, Jake? Yeah. People, you know, I'm like, my conversations with God, but I'm like, you know, I thought it would, I thought it was going to be cool to tell the truth. <laughs> and then he's like, no, everyone hates truth tellers, Roseanne. They only like them after they've been dead 2,000 years <laughs> and only if they died in horrific, <laughs> painful, torturous ways. Yeah, burn at ways. the stake. It's true. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Torn, you know, limb from limb or something. Then they like them. But when they're telling the truth, they hate them. There's a saying. It's like the truth is like poetry, and everyone fucking hates poetry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so true. That's a good one. I stole that from a movie. I think I stole that from uh, The Big Short or something like that. Such a good line. Yeah. I want to throw one thing out there. When you were talking about Bush and Iraq, like I wanted to serve too. Thank mm -hmm. God. I hate, I hate my libtard sisters. <laughs> But thank God, Jessica, that day, because it was right after 9-11, I said, I'm going to go join. And she's like, you're not going to do it. It's bullshit. Cheney's involved. She told me about Halliburton. Yeah. Like I knew all this stuff, and I ended up not joining the military, thank God. So I give her a little credit as much as she drives me crazy. Well, you have to thank him for doing it. No, Even thank you though, for your service. Like, you know what I'm going to say. Text, we, yeah. no, but, <laughs> say, say it. And then I I'll already say. did. I told him. I said, Jimmy, thank you for your service. Thank you for your tax dollars. <laughs> they fed us steak and lobster tail every Sunday in Iraq. Oh, cool. And then the education. So it's like, 
Um, no, I was proud to do it. I don't have any regrets. I didn't shoot anybody. Um, I was really scared to do it and I, and I did it. And so like, it's something that I'll always have. And, and because of it, here's the one takeaway that makes me real passionate about freedom is that I was in Northern Iraq, I was in Mosul and man, did this population hate us. Yeah. And what I thought I was going there to liberate them. Yeah. And then I remember going, I was a military police. And so we did escorts and we were training the, um, the convoy security and we we're training the Iraqi police. And every time we go into these Iraqi police stations to train them and other things, give them supplies. When you'd have an interpreter, you know, converse with you and they always, I'll never forget this. They always addressed every sentence with tell the invader this. <laughs> tell, right. And I'm like, I'm like 25 years old. He's like, and he's looking at me like he wants to kill me. And, and, and by the way, these were the same people that fought us when we invaded. Yeah. And they're like, tell the invader why, you know, I want to know why the invader is here. Tell the invader this, tell the invader that invader, invader, invader. And I'm just sending a thing in this. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I was like, because it hit home because I we're driving and doing these convoys and I'm seeing these people look at you. I've never seen looks of disdain like this. They want you dead. And I don't blame them. Yeah. If, if someone, country, whatever, invaded us, I'm oh, not going to yeah. tolerate that. No. Um, so, yeah, but the part, oh, I was going to say this, is that yeah. that's the part that stuck with me is that the poor Iraqi people were yeah. a beaten down, submitted people that were that had had tyranny over them for decades, and they and they were beaten into submission, yes. and that's a their souls had been sucked, and then they had to just tolerate us dominating their daily lives and determining blocking traffic and stuff. Like just they're just trying to go to work. Like that's the thing I was most surprised when I started doing combat missions. Like oh my god, this isn't a war zone. People are just like literally trying to just go to work and go shop and just live their lives, and seeing just seeing them after the victims of tyranny i was like oh man that is an yeah. ugly sight you can't forget mm -mm. It's sad um so yeah coming to america uh, <laughs> sooner than you think probably definitely yeah, um it is it's on its way well i mean i don't understand why i guess once you are really invested in bringing that anywhere it's inevitable that you're going to bring it home after you did every place else you got to go to the one place that still remains where you didn't screw that up mm. That's home. Yeah, Save right. your home for last. I right? think the CIA was like, "Shit, where else? Where are we going tomorrow?" Yeah. A couple well, years ago, I was like, "Let's go. To, let's go to America." Money. The thing yeah. is, <laughs> they just go where there's a, the biggest pool of money, and that was the American middle class. Yep. Right. So they had to go there and suck it out. Yeah, and I that's, that's true. what the whole last ten years have been about. Right. Well, what I wanted to say just real quick was that remember Bush, mm -hmm. remember when they were when one of the guys spoke out, I forget who he was. It was Valerie Plame's husband, and he said that there's no evidence of yellow cake or yeah. So yeah. they outed his wife as a CIA agent, but basically put her life at risk. And I remember watching this live, and yeah, I was like, Bush is a war yeah. criminal. And then Cheney does this no bid contract mm -hmm. to Halliburton. So this is why I was a Democrat. But this this is the point I want to make. That's the same playbook that Biden is doing to us exactly. now and Trump and, and Obama. And it's like, holy shit, I hated George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. I was a Democrat. And when, and when Trump won, and I remember being around my friends, they're like, Trump is the worst president ever. I go, do you not remember fucking eight years ago? With Bush? But they anyway, wanted the, to burn him at the stake. Remember that? He people? was the worst president ever. But what I'm saying is, oh, my God, Bush, and she calls it bush Obama, and Biden, that's the same. Right. It's not even a public Democrat. It's that's. It's just a destruction of uh, they do civil the same, rights in America. Yeah, and the same they, bird, they, different that They would have got a black guy to preside over the destruction of civil rights in America. It just proves how evil, mm -hmm. how Isn't fucking scary? double dealing and evil. And they all they hate are. Trump. They all hate Trump. I know, which is the reason us. to support him. It's yep. like, so listen to this. You want to hear you. a, a big conspiracy saying. about the Iraq War involving Cheney and everything? Everyone mm -hmm. talks about Halliburton, Halliburton, Halliburton. Yeah, that's something to focus on. But here's something wild that few are, are aware of. When I said I ate steak and lobster tail on Sundays mm -hmm. in Iraq, that came from a, co a company called Kellogg Brown and Root, more commonly referred to as KBR. They do all the logistics and supply chain for the United States military. For example, the housing, the food, moving millions of tons of equipment over the oceans. Um, so guess who was the vice president of KBR right up until the 20, uh, 2000 election? Newsom. I'm going to guess, uh, give, me, give me one second. This is good. I love this question. Uh, Hunter Biden. Dick Cheney. <laughs> mm. oh, so the, the, they got a no-bid contract. And then if you look, there, was, there used oh. to be New York Times. Back when the media hated George W. Bush, they were trying to do everything to expose. And uh, KBR was implicated in literally billions of dollars in overcharges for everything. So they got this right, no-bid contract. Seats, and yeah. so he, I'm like, I want to know how, yeah. many, how many stocks... Dick Cheney owned in KBR. So he left. He stepped down to become vice president. Yeah. But I'm like, what investment does, what, what, to what level is he a stakeholder in that company that just got well, trillions of dollars? Yeah, Liz probably was a fucking LLC. Yeah, she's, yeah. 
That's oh probably why God. she hates Trump too. Yeah. She, of course, that's that's why people are like Liz Cheney's a brave, like Rosie O'Donnell. Liz Cheney's brave. Look at a Republican crossing the aisle. To, I'm like, she's a fucking daughter of a war criminal. Yep. And you're on her side. You hated Cheney eight years ago, and you're defending this right. bitch. You want to hear something else? <laughs> mm-hmm. So when President Trump, or when he went on stage back when they were doing the debates prior to him being uh, elected as president, when they were doing initial debates, when he was going against George W. Bush, I'll never forget this, and a lot of people have forgotten it. But he did say he's like referring to his father, Jeb's father. He lied. They knew there was no WMD and they went in there. He said it. He said Mm -hmm. they, he lied. And I'm like that right there. You just accused a war criminal of being a war criminal. And if I'm a war criminal, you, oh man, I, if, if I'm willing to be a war criminal, I'm willing to stop the person that's accused me of that. I just wanted to take a second to tell you and remind you again that we are now affiliated with Gold Co., you can go to rblikesgold.com. That is my mother's uh, landing page with them and fill out the IRA kit form. Um, that's what they specialize in. If you have a retirement account, and you got your money in savings or stocks and you have this big plan, you, you can't, you cannot rely on it. Things are too volatile. I suggest highly that you look into transferring your retirement into, into gold and silver, at least a portion of it. Because we don't know what's gonna happen with the stock market. I mean. Biden's shitting his pants. Literally, an election's coming. China's here. I mean, you know, you know how insane things are. So, go in there, fill out the form. If you have a retirement account, uh, they'll walk you through it. You got to do it. You can change it years later if you, if you're not comfortable or things get better. But right now, put as much of your money safely in gold and silver as you can. You can also just buy gold and silver on this website. You don't have to do the IRA kit. That's what they specialize in. That's what they, you know, that's the product that they're best known for but you don't have to do it just fill it out when you talk to someone say i just want to buy gold and silver bars they'll talk you through that as well so go to rblikesgold.com and protect your wealth thank you and i'm like that right no now I'm like shit. that yeah. is what it is so he this pissed shit off the deep. bushes and the clintons that's yeah why i love him yeah that's why well, I, love I think him. that's what trump's doing right now he's forcing obama into the light yeah and thank god um it's because he's clearly pulling some strings here is he not literally the he He's bragged the about. Remember, he bragged with the Kobe, Kobe, Stephen Kobe. This Kobe is was, his third term. Yeah, yeah, with the earpiece. Well, in the he basement. hates white people. I can't believe how much he hates white people after all they did for him. Um, which is a shame. All right, he so hates you, black people too. He killed his chef allegedly. Remember, well, that was a black guy. I mean, guy. he don't like black people anymore, and he likes it. This white wanna, people. I don't That's know if I should say <laughs> this. Maybe no, you should. This is the Roseanne Barr podcast. Is where this you say is it. so provocative. <laughs> what? Well. President Obama, his mother was white. I know. You'd think he'd care about that. Yeah. Why would he say that white people are awful when his own mother was white? Right. And, you know, if you want to go down That's a rabbit like hole. That's calling your mom a hole. Right. If you want to go down a rabbit hole. She was a hoe, though. She was doing all kind of <laughs> pornographic <laughs> modeling in the. She was? She? Yeah, with that Frank Marshall Davis. Oh. Miss Otero? I porn pictures of her when she was only 15. Can I look oh, this up? Oh, no, that's yeah, awful. I didn't know that. Bitch. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Did, that's horrific. Hannah, I've t-shirt. heard rumors that she was CIA. Google I, it, bitch. Oh, she was that, too. Everybody it, bitch. in the CIA sacrifices their firstborn to oh, the CIA. Oh, God. Look at everybody that's ever assassinated everybody mm. is in has CIA parents. That's oh no, that's like Nazi stuff. Where like they have to Hello? kill their own German Shepherd and stuff. Bitch. Yeah. Operation Paperclip. All right, but well, they brought over all the Nazis and they run our whole government. They didn't lose World War Two; they won. It seems like they're still running the show. They are. And Nazi World are. Order is the new World Order. Too bad yeah. they're gonna lose like some crying big ass baby bullies. You know, they're cry bullies. Yeah, they I are. Like that they project. They they accuse you of everything that they actually do. Like the you know textbook. Uh, rules for radicals and but yeah they are there are people that can dish it they can't take it they're weak-minded um and yeah they're all dirty and they're all blackmailed mm-hmm. that's the real deal it is that's why they'll do anything because if they don't they'd be lucky to go to prison for the rest yeah. of their lives yeah. lucky yeah. they might get worse and so can yeah you they're all imagine in. how horrible prison would be for some of the shit they've done oh man for those people they would be that's and so that's the thing they'd be doomed to a lifetime of, cons- uh, of, of isolation, um, the being confinement. 
Like, you know, like how they do it. Nobody like, to lie to or fuck over. Yeah. That'd be worse than living in hell. <laughs> it is. It would be. Because yeah. they, they, they crave that dopamine rush they get from lying in that little ex- yeah. that three seconds of power they feel they have. Yeah. Because that's the only thing I can explain. Like, why do these people yeah. live the lives they have? They've already made all their money. So it's like, why are you living this lifestyle? Because I got to fuck somebody over yeah. for a minute. Oh, it feels yeah. good for a second. Ugh. Oh, they a bought surge it. of blood. Ugh. I was able to <laughs> gaslight them. I was able to gaslight them and then suck their blood just yeah. before they died. <laughs> <laughs> Steal their, you know... And a little energy vampires. Yeah, little, they little are. sacrifice thing. Um, yeah, these people are insane. I'm like, it's it's abject insanity. That's why I lifestyle. say I'm bringing crazy back because it's going to take crazy to fight crazy. That's right. That's you got to fight fire with idea. fire, right? That's right. I'm bringing the heat, bitch. That's right. What did you, th- <laughs> you think of Mom's speech last night? Jimmy was next to me when you were on stage. So it was a great pleasure. I got to talk I about this real quick. I lost my whole yeah, speech. I saw it. We got to talk about I went this. into huge panic because I've... 75 disorders. But then I was like, God save me. God, I pray right to God. God, this is all your fault. You told me to do this. <laughs> uh, once again. You killed you it. You have some kind of joke Did going here. Did you hear that, here. Ma? Let me tell oh, you. Let you. me tell you. Because I was sitting right next to Jake. Yeah. So it was a great pleasure. Front row right there. I was watching you. I was like, this next is surreal. I was thrilled Cullen. to be there. Yeah. And Thank so you. here's the thing. So I witnessed. I saw, you know, you're like, oh, shit. You're going through the laptop, and you can't find the notes. And you finally just close it. And the whole cr- – you said it. You're like, oh, okay. You know, and you made jokes about it. And um, and then you just – you winged it, and it was killer. The crowd loved it. No one knew what you were going to say next. The I could feel the energy in the crowd. They loved it. The, the, the reception, you know, you could hear it the laughs and everything else, and it was highly effective, and it was so authentic. Too. And this is what people love about you, Roseanne, is that you're authentic, that whatever you're going to say, you're going to believe it, and people know it. Even people that don't like you, you know, <laughs> the, the, the evil left, like, you know, it's like they know you believe it. So it's like, you know, there's something very special about that is to he- hear somebody. It's the same reason why they like Trump is that, you know, at least he 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 says what he's feeling. Yeah. And I like that about him because I even do if too. I don't agree with something, right. and there's very few things at I actually agree with on most everything. Yeah. But if there's some things, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say everything he said. Like, I'm Jimmy. I think for myself, and mm. I would encourage everyone else to think for yourself. Be you. Be you. But that's what people like about him is that it, I'm like, this is what I tell people that like support Obama. I'm like, oh, you missed that nice and f- – because people say, oh, he's not presidential enough. He leaves these mean tweets. I'm like, oh, does it make you feel nice and warm and fuzzy when those politicians <laughs> lie to your face? It feels nice and good inside. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, I just prefer to be lied to. Oh, I like a nice that. suit and a teleprompter. Right? And what's the worst thing? People say, like, well, I don't like these mean tweets. I'm like, the worst thing I could see that he ever said was calling someone a loser. Yeah. And they were a loser. Yeah. Like, it's like, wh- who cares? I'm like, I want to know what he's thinking. I want to know what the top dog – is thinking, and I appreciate that he shares that, and that's what people admire about you and the, the like about you. So I honestly thought you killed the speech. I left. I was smiling. Everyone was like energized. People liked it. People, have been, I've been seeing you here walk around the convention center, and people are adoring you. And so I just think, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know what it was the notes that you had that you didn't say, but I thought you killed it. Thanks. Well, uh, thank you so much, and I'm just happy that I did get my two quotes in that Jake saved my life because I was like, oh no, I have that quote. <laughs> From uh, Thomas Paine and Patrick Henry. You said uh, Patrick Henry, but it was Thomas Paine. Not the top one was Patrick Henry. Oh, I don't remember. All I know is I I was too fat to jump that fence, and I was so scared I was going to fall. You nailed it, though. Thank you. You I did did it. I'm still (laughs) a little agile enough at 45. (laughs) No, your speech was great. The reason I asked is because this morning there was a hit piece in the New York Post, Mm -hmm. and and I told her. But I expect it. But this this is what what I want to say. When they have a hit piece against you, that means you did it. That yeah. means you won. That means you hit the target and that you scared the shit out of the fucking Well, Satanist. like I told Jake so and congrats. like I've said to everybody, I mean, it is a sad state of affairs when I've become the voice of sanity. I love it, though. <laughs> what a wild time we live in. Because, like, yeah, and I think the fact that you had said that you're all in for Trump yeah. is one of the things that these powers that be, because they're trying to desperately to get Vivek or DeSantis, yeah. whoever else. They yeah. And I'm like, they... The reality is that Trump has the numbers. And yeah. so when someone like you, yeah. that other people admire and want to hear speak about these things, when you are like energizing the crowd to say, hey, listen, I'm so all in for him. And then you said, because if I don't, they're going to send me to the gulag. Yeah. The gulag. And so it's like, I'm like, that right there. I'm like, that's a reminder to everybody listening. It's like, hang on a second. Like, you know what happened in 2020. If you don't, you're lost. You're just, yeah, come on. Yeah, that's the truth. They're going to send us all the gulag. This will deteriorate so quickly, and it's going to. Um, it doesn't have to, though, and I am optimistic. Like I said, I think things will get worse before they get better. Is but that like, optimistic? 
Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'm optimistic, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Most everyone will die, I'll survive because I am a doomsday prepper. I will be uh, raptured. Yeah, yeah. I hope we make it. I'm I going hope. to the spaceship. Do we talk about the spaceship? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's behind the moon. <laughs> Here, drink this Kool-Aid, we're going. Let's, let's go. <laughs> well, I, I think that uh, my prediction is that um, it's very biblical and... Uh, that all falsehood is going to be burned away, and it's going yep. to take a while. But it's speeding up. It is. It's exciting. And it's like they are just uh, exposing themselves right and left, and we don't even have to get any karma on us to do it for them. They're right. doing it themselves. I mean, Jill Biden's Christmas card is the greatest thing I've oh ever seen God. in bad entertainment. Was that the dancing? Yeah. Oh, that's that was a Christmas card. I didn't know what that was. I mean, if that isn't just the seventh level of hell right there, <laughs> it's just hell. That's Somebody hell said it was like. a Kubrick movie. It's if hell you, on earth. It was. The, I couldn't get through it. That was. That was. It was cringe. And that, they think that's a Christmas message. Yeah, these people are insane. Just like, did you see last year how they put up? They're putting up their Christmas lights on their tree at like nine p.m. on December twenty fourth. Yeah. Did you see this? Mm -mm. Yeah, because they don't. They, it is a religious war. Right. That's what I want people to know. Mm -hmm. It isn't a coincidence that it looks like they're anti-Christianity and anti-Judaism. And even anti-Muslim in so many cases. Yeah. Uh, they're anti-anything that isn't extremist fundamentalist. They're anti-God. Right? That's what Anti-God, yeah, they mm -hmm. are. And they're anti-people ever having any hope of peace. They're nihilists. They, they're they worse than yeah, an atheist. Nihilist. The nihilism is the most dangerous thing on earth because they don't believe in anything. They don't think it matters. Yeah. So Satanism. people need to operate their lives That's as if true. it does matter. Like I, I was inspired by Jordan B. Peterson when he was talking about this a number of years ago where he said that like even if you, you believe in something and you know your life will be improved and it's like I operate my life. It's like that we're being – watch that this mm -hmm. is a test that I I'm when so I die too. I'm gonna wake up and they're all everyone I love is gonna be surrounding me and be like Jimmy <laughs> why did you say that why did you do that <laughs> yeah and it reminds me pulls me back in it's like right it's like what you do does matter yeah it does. um it and, matters for everything yeah and so it's like people, I like that vision I think yeah. I share that yeah I believe it I've seen signs and I've had some miraculous synchronicities in my life that have proven to me time and time again me they too. go way beyond the realm of coincidence mm -hmm. that happen at just the right time and just the right way to prove to me that like oh my god like we are part of something that goes beyond the veil of the human eyes that we mm -hmm. are part of creation and it is special and what we do in life matters in in more ways than we can comprehend and so I'm all in on that how about that <laughs> yeah, I love what uh, Marianne Williamson and why I wanted to interview her, which I did, is she wrote such a brilliant piece, and uh, of course I forgot to read it when she was on, but uh, about what people are so afraid of is afraid that we might be divine. Yeah. Afraid mm. that we might, in fact, have the power to turn everything around. Afraid that we might be able to, in our uh, love for what is good in each other and what's good in uh, our country, uh, the best of everything, that we would be able to create heaven on earth. That, that Because, in fact, we do have that power. We just don't have the vision and we don't know how to hold the vision long enough to right. make it happen. But we could very quickly learn if we right. knew and we're honest about the threat we're under. Right. I completely agree. Um, I say that um, there's this uh, line from Exodus. I think it's, I can't remember that exact number, but it's like, I am that I am. And the one that yep. is called I am has sent me on to you. I'm like, that's it. Because like we always say, well, I am, I am Jimmy. It's like, I, I think that we're all connected to the divine is that I'm not the God. It's just that we're all part of this one thing. It's like, if I'm made up of, if we are all made up of stardust and all of these various elements have come together to the point that I can sit here in front next to you and not just talk about it and think about it, but feel it. That right there in itself is proof of, of intelligent design. Call it creator. I call it the source because I don't like to use yeah, the word. I like source. I'm too. careful on the word God now because like mm -hmm. I was raised Catholic and I know I've, I know people that were raised in, with such religious dogma that it repels them. Mm -hmm. So I just I try to break it down and say, well, I'm the source of all that is. I am one with the source of all that is. And the source of all that is is one with me. And that wherever all this came from, whatever this mm -hmm. is, we are all one with it. 
That's Something a powerful good way on that. to look at it. I always say it's the battery. Mm. And we got all got to learn to plug in. Right. Because it's the only thing that makes everything live and work and go. Right. And you the know? enemy is all about creating that little seed of doubt in all yeah. of us when we start to feel right. close to God. Or like, you know, the archaeology, whatever they are, come after you, scientists, TM. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the mainstream media comes after you. They all come after us. It's like they just won't plant that little thing. Like, you don't really believe that, do you? You don't right. really think there's a God. Really? Uh, how about this? And it, they just are so scared that you're just going to go, no, well, I they, know. I don't think I'm smarter they think than you. that way. I think they think that you have a captured mind if you think that way. And I think that they really feel that the holy books and the whole notion of God is a filthy one. You really think that? I do. Well, yeah, because I was around them for so long. I was one of them. And yeah. they think, oh, these... Uh, mind controlled deplorables that cling to their guns and yeah. their mm. their ancient faiths and their lower chakras and shit that is um, true you know they've got to be removed from this world because first of all they're useless eaters and two they have bad teeth <laughs> and three you know they just go down the checklist like that and three we could own what they have in a heartbeat but you, all we have to do is figure out the scam of getting it you mm. believed in god when you were a leftist though Right? I did, and that's what ultimately made me leave because mm. I saw, oh, my God, the Jews over here don't even believe in Torah. Yeah, that They're was anti-Torah. They stand there and say, uh, free Palestine. Yeah. And prevent the Jews from praying at their holy sites. What? Yeah. But that's how, how communist Jews are. They don't even know what's real. Yeah, they're not godly, I don't think, mm -mm. Those, those Jews. I, I don't know. Well, they're it's not crazy. like me. No. They don't see a long history. They see a history that began, what, in the early 1900s? Yeah. Rather than 6,000 years ago, because they're anti-science, anti-history, anti-fact, anti-biology, anti-every fucking thing. Yeah. Anti-truth. Do you think they know that they're lying, or are they just dumb? I... <laughs> Such a good question. <laughs> right? It's like, don't it start to tell the difference? A little bit of both. I've wondered that myself, but I think they know they're lying, but right. they think they're getting paid for it, so it's okay. Right, right. It's worth it, and it's harmless, and it doesn't, ma and it doesn't matter long run The anyways. only thing they care about is any means necessary. If we have to, you know, throw away in Georgia, because this is what they did, the votes they didn't count in Georgia were the black voters who voted for Trump. Right. That's what they threw out. So if they could be like, hey, we're going to nullify black people's votes in Georgia, a, pre a, a former slave state, and call that pro-democracy because we'll eat two yards of shit with both hands as long as we're getting paid. Mm -hmm. I ran as a socialist, so I'd go around and ask people you know, to support my campaign, and they'd be like, how much do you pay? <laughs> I'd be like, you, I would, it made me go crazy. I go, you don't get paid for being a, a socialist revolutionary. <laughs> but they thought you did. And I said, you don't. You get paid after you win. Then you get paid yeah. big, but not before. You get paid after you win, for yeah. sure. Look mm -hmm. at Obama. Half the, oh, yeah. half the government got jobs because of Obama. Right. That's what we Half say. of the people that don't care that they, you know, stole the election. Right. We're put in place by Obama going, hey, we're going to steal the election because we can't let these deplorable white racists cling to their Bibles and their friggin' faith and money and not give us what we deserve his for being words, Democrats. Those are his own words. The, you know, the, when he said, um, when he was caught on that high, hot mic when he was running mm -hmm. for president, and he said them, them and their guns, cling to the religion and their guns is what he had said. Yeah. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what is that? That's an interesting comment, and it, it really sheds insight into the way he thinks. I think that guy was a Manchurian candidate. If you want I to do, the too. Truth. He was. He was an invention of the CIA. I do, too. He, he, He's really... also an invention of Jeremiah Wright, what ha which happened at the time when they were trying to hybrid uh, Islam in with uh, that certain kind of Christianity right. that was the... Uh, the Trinity. Yeah, that Jesus was sort of a salesman kind of guy, uh, thing they were doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I forgot about that Jeremiah Wright, his uh, his pastor, right? That mm -hmm. guy, right? the chickens come home and roost guy. That guy. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the scariest thing that happened? No one ever talks about it. Do you remember all the 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 churches that were blown up, and I think it was Sri Lanka and all over the world by Muslims, 
and Obama and Hillary Clinton and I can't remember who else all tweeted the same day that their prayers were for the Easter worshipers. Do you remember this? No, when was no. this? This was really no one ever talks about this. It was mind blowing. This right up. It. Check it out. Uh, I think it was a Sri Lanka attack. So Muslims were blowing up Christian churches, and, and um, so it happened. It happened in like three different cities. Horrible carnage. So obviously Hillary and Obama had to speak on it, but they didn't say Christians. Yeah, they, they said never, Easter yeah. worshippers. All right, so I need to listen to this full speech because I noticed they have avoided Why that. Why would these they were not tweets? Say- because oh. they couldn't, yeah, and go look it up. I'm not making well, this up. Well, that's even worse then because it's like you're choosing your writing. And they all had pretty right. much the same yeah. tweet, like a threat to our democracy. And I was like, I was, that was my red pill moment because I used to be a Democrat. That was the one where I was like, I'm just remembering this now. Like, why can't you say Christians were attacked by Muslims? Because Christians are attacked all over the world still. They're very yeah. highly persecuted. More and oh, more yeah. and more. more. Probably the most attacked. Jews, yeah. Jews always like think it's us, but it's really, it's Christians. And... That next day, they were like prayers to the Easter worshipers. And I was like, what the fuck is an Easter worshiper? That's a Christian or a Catholic or whatever. It I was the weirdest thing. And it just kind of wafted over the room, and everyone kind of let it go. And I remember it stuck with me. I'm not remembering it till now. That's wild. I need yeah. to look into that. Look, look into that. It was weird. Anyway, Obama is like... Uh... Like, why can't you say Christian, Obama? Why can't you say a Christian was attacked by a Muslim? Why can't you say a Jew was attacked by a Muslim? Why right. is that so hard for you, Obama? Yeah, it, he came out for Hamas too. Oh, I mean, he's just despicable. He, it is, but um, we we do have to wrap up. Can, okay. Can I ask? I know we have to wrap up. We really only have like five minutes, right. but can you just give her five minutes of Antarctica for me? Because oh, it's, oh shit, and yeah. we'll, we'll have you back. Um, oh, I, want, I don't have any like to, secret uh, knowledge on Antarctica, but, but do, I will... you th- do, you, do you think it's the Nazi uh, breakaway thing, or you just know more historically the stuff about Antarctica? So, I don't know. Like, okay. I, th- there's weird things about Antarctica, which is that all the 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 what is it? All the hands have their thing in the in the honey jar. The, what how's that saying go? Yeah, like, all, all the governments have making money in there. Yeah. The, yeah, and I think all right. So I have I have a few thoughts. One could be real conspiratorial. I'll say if it's not, kind of an international place. Nobody can claim it. Right, right, and they all have it split up, like mm-hmm. down to like the center of it, and it's like it's like a big think of a big pie chart. It's like here's uh-huh. the U.S. and China, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I think if I had so I, we'll go into like levels of conspiracy. If I had to go to just the most likely scenario, I think it's the fact that the poles are going to shift, that ice is going to melt, most people on Earth will die, and then underneath that ice, in its abundance of all the Earth's resources, hmm. there will be oil, gold, diamonds, um, God knows what else, maybe even evidence of a lost civilization. I should also say that the ice is supposed to be really old, so that shouldn't be possible. If you want to like, you know, people are listening, I don't want to like, give you information that's inaccurate, but there's something weird about Antarctica. There is. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, the Nazis had interest in it, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. If you know anyone reads about it, it's like, oh, they were just interesting in getting whale oil and, da, 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 and that's the end of it. Mm, okay. No. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I know that like, it's just something about it. So I don't know if it's like the place where the, the you know, it's the entrance to inner earth or something, <laughs> uh, you know, probably not, but maybe like, I, I don't. Yeah. Some people Do you say tell it him is. Ma? You know huh? what it is or you have theories on it. Well, they say it's a breakaway continent right. that the Nazis founded in World War II just before and during. Right. Where it's supposed to be bigger than the whole North American continent right. under the ice where, so it's bigger than our whole continent. And they brought something like 40,000 German women there during mm-hmm. World War to to meet with the soldiers they had there, right. the perfect in you know, Aryan people. Mm. And they've had all this time to breed and there's two hundred and fifty million of them that live there. See, and that's where all the high space tech is coming from. See that's fascinating. And I'm yeah. open to it. A lot of people won't believe this stuff, but I will say that there's this Jake, did you see that map I sent you? Yeah, that's what I wanted you to yeah, okay, that so was crazy. There's a map from the late 1670s. It's called the Kunyu Kuantu map. It was made by this Polish map ma- ma- map maker who moved to China. Mm-hmm. It's like 1677 or 1672, regardless. It shows. So let me just say this to anyone listening: Antarctica wasn't discovered until 1820, mm-hmm. according to what we, were, we taught about in school. Right. However, there are other maps that seemingly show the Antarctic continent hundreds of years before its alleged mm-hmm. discovery. Now, people will debunk it and say, well, this is probably just Tierra del Fuego, which is on the southern tip of Antarctica. Others will say, uh-huh. oh, this is just Australia. What's unique about this map is a couple things. One, it shows Tierra del Fuego, and it's not connected to it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It shows Antarctica, or excuse me, Australia, which is not connected to it whatsoever. 
And the only thing that's more bizarre than all of that is that it shows giraffes, crocodiles, beavers, all kinds of exotic animals down there. And now let me say this. The skeptics will say that, oh, well, that's obviously just one, not possible because it's guessing. frozen. Yeah. And two, they'll say, well, it's just artist depiction, like perhaps the unexplored land. But here's where it gets wild is that going back to even the ancient Greeks, they understood that not only the earth was round, but that the poles were frozen. Mm -hmm. So this is the most bizarre map. It's Kunyu Kwantu, K-U-N-U Kwantu, like Q-U-A-N-T-U. It's even on the Library of Congress website. You can look this up. It even has a Wikipedia page. And I only just learned of it a number of months ago. And I'm like, how have I never seen or heard of this map before? Yeah, isn't that incredible when that stuff happens? Right. And so yeah. I'm like, I'm not here to tell anyone it's real or that it was thawed out and there's animals down there. Like, you know what I mean? But like mm -hmm. at the same time, I it look at, be. you know, we're talking about like Nazi escape, you mm -hmm. know, I was, my mind was blown when I realized that in 1955, 10 years after uh, Hitler was allegedly killed himself, allegedly, they never found him, that the CIA was pouring enormous resources into looking for him. And that the rumors are that he and a bunch of other Nazis escaped to Argentina. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's a rabbit hole because I'm like, mm -hmm. not only did they never find his skull when they thought they had found Ava Bronze, it turned out to be not positive. It was like the opposite sex and different age mm -hmm. or whatever it was. Like they don't find not right. vanished without a trace. Right. Whereas they found the Goebbels, they found all them, and so it's like knowing someone like a tyrant like him. I'm like something tells me, and I don't know him, <laughs> but I'm like he didn't kill himself. That pussy dipped out. Yeah, and he dipped out of there. He, he you know he didn't go down with the ship. He mm. fucking ran out of there. Mm -hmm. And so God knows. You know, I don't know how long. I he think lived. he went to Argentina too. I would think so. There's huge. I think Nazis they all they went to a, the there. U.S. They mm -hmm. went. Some went to Mexico. Yeah. And so, and some went to Argentina. Yeah, and this is very. They, they, they've, they've said that. No. Right. Nazis they've have told gone there. Everyone there. They did. They, there's no, whole communities that still speak German. I absolutely. couldn't believe this. There's, I learned this on Joe Rogan. We had that gentleman on and was talking about it. And I, I started looking into it. I'm like. No, I watched a documentary on it. They have like Nazi towns, basically, yeah. or German. I shouldn't say that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but World War II era German towns. Right. They're full on like little Germany, yeah. and a lot of them did did flee there. Um, all right, well, we do have to wrap up, but I I, I have to say I absolutely I knew this was going to be a good episode. It was this great. is a lot of fun. It was I, wonderful. I love my to pleasure. Talk with you. you I want to do it again. I do too. Yeah, there's love we us. barely dipped in on all the the fun stuff to talk about. Oh, I know we barely did. We're gonna have now back, we know where you're at, we'll go even deeper. You bet. You know yeah, where I stand. There's like 9,000 rabbit holes for <laughs> connecting all this shit. That's what he does, Mom. He I just goes it. and he does, but he does the research. A lot of people will go and he actually does it and he's fascinating. I, share, I show screenshots. I'm like, yeah. look, I'm not getting this. I'm not pulling this out of my butt. I'm not getting it. it from Bob's you know, blog spot website. This is like mainstream. There's all these studies and things that exist. It's like, look, it's right here. But anyway. It's one of the best YouTube channels. Hands down. Well, that's so, nice of you to say. No, it's, this it's, is one of the best podcasts. I and agree. Roseanne, I'm so proud of you. I know what you've gone through and how tough they, they have, they've put your feet into the fire and you wind up on top. And I think that you're part of this fight for a reason. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I would never be discouraged by any type of criticism you ever get. The masses are with you. And if I were you, I would re-energize and put that energy back into the fight. Because these people, in my mind, you're at escape orbit. You, no, they can't take you. They can't cancel you. Like, what, you would have to literally curb stomp somebody or something to get canceled. Like, it is, nothing you say is going is, is to gonna stop what's going on. And you are, the proof is in the pudding that you're inspiring millions of other people. And, and I remember listening real quick, because we'll, I know we're running out of time. I remember listening to that speech you gave. It seemed impromptu in Las Vegas just a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. It was very, very inspiring. I played it for my girlfriend, Brandy, and it was, I got chills when I heard you talking about um, it was just, what was it, God's truth. You said something. Reawaken tour, yeah. Yep, yep. And you were talking, and it gave me chills because you're like, we all have a part to play in this, and that, you know, and we are loved, and this is spiritual. And, you know, it, it, it resonated with a nerd YouTuber, so it, you're, effect, you're, you're influencing more people than you can possibly imagine. But I you hope are so. You are. I hope so because it, it would be so easy for us to just really get together and fix things quickly. Hmm? We, we definitely, the smart ones can do it. I believe it. Yeah. The world is what we make of it, and the, the future is, is uncertain, and I believe it's bright. Yeah, sure, it might get worse before it gets better, but it will end. The uni I believe the arc of the universe favors good over evil. It certainly it does. Yeah. It certainly does. Let's make a, a pact that we get, get close to Zuckerberg and get in that fucking yeah. bunker his and kick his nerd ass out. I just want to meet him All and be like, I want to see fail. if I get alien vibes. I just want to know if like, okay, he's just a guy. No, he no, might be a little awkward, but I want to no, know, I wanna know if he's... 
I his wanna, parents. Yeah, I want to just scratch all... his cheek and see if there's reptilians. No, yeah. is, it, is it blue are blood? All yeah. CIA too. They're all in it. Of yeah. course. Yeah, but of... the thing is, it, it's so easy to dispel all their power. I mean, we have to come back and talk about how Absolutely. to dispel their power on that bombshell because it's uh, easy. I uh, love yep. you, Jimmy. I, uh, oh, plug thank your, you so much. Plug your YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, Bright Insight, Jimmy Corsetti. You can find me on Instagram. I'm now blowing things up on X, Twitter. I love it. You can follow mm-hmm. me on local. Support me on Patreon. I'm in the. I'm in the fight. I'm taking this because like, I. I feel the same way. Like I. If there's anything I learn about history, it repeats itself, and they will always go after the people who speak truth, the historians, the teachers, anyone else. It will only be the state that can say anything, yeah. and that's the direction this is going. So I'm all in on on freedom. Right. And Amen. also, the experts are always wrong. Yeah. They experts are. TM. Experts That's TM. Right. Experts TM. Truth TM. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see.